Obediently, we trooped through, and I watched Tom as he took in the huge room with its long glass wall. That view of the forest is quite something, isn't it? Tom said at last. Yes. It's getting a bit creepy this time on the Richard and Judy Book Club podcast, exclusive to WH Smith. I stared out into the woods. It was growing dark and somehow the shadows made it feel as if all the trees had taken a collective step towards the house, leaning in to shut out the sky. It makes you feel a bit exposed somehow, doesn't it? I think it's the lack of curtains. I like it, Tom said. Feels like a stage. And we're the audience, Melanie asked. But I don't think that's what Tim meant, was it? Tom, Tom said. There was a slight edge to his voice. No, I was thinking of it the other way around. We're the actors, he turned to face the glass wall. The audience. The audience is out there. Hi, I'm Ruth Ware and I'm the author of In a Dark Dark Wood. Now the next book is, it's basically about a hen party from hell. It is a thriller and it's very creepy and it's very fast paced and very slickly written. And I'm very glad to say we have Ruth Ware, the author, sitting with us now. And Ruth, this is your debut novel. Uh, yeah, it's my debut thriller. Yeah. Debut thriller. Yeah. Why, do you mean that you've written other books? Um, I've written YA books. Yeah, oh, young for, adult yeah, fiction. For, yeah, for yeah, okay. We should give the title, it's In a Dark Dark Wood which is a great title, and actually taken from that, that old nursery rhyme, isn't it? It is, Can you yeah. you just recite it for us? Yeah, in a dark, dark wood, there was a dark, dark house, and in a dark, dark house, there was a dark, dark room. In the dark, dark room, there was a dark, dark cupboard, and in the dark, dark cupboard, there was a skeleton. Yeah. I used to have it read to me as a child, and I found that moment, you knew it was coming, when yeah, they would yeah, kind yeah. of leap on you, it was utterly <laughs> terrifying. Yeah, yeah, and it's a very clever title, actually, because um, apart from anything else, it, it is set in a dark, dark wood. Uh, the house where the hen party from hell uh, takes place. Now, before we sort of talk about um, the setting and everything, can you just give us a resume of the, of the story? Yeah, so um, my main character, Nora, has been um, invited um, to a hen party um, by her former best friend. And you know from the outset that there's kind of bad blood between them. Something's happened that Nora feels guilty about, um, but you don't know quite what it is. Um, and slightly against her better judgment, she accepts, um, even though she doesn't really want to. And they haven't seen each other for 10 years, have they? No. Because they're now in their mid-20s, but uh, they, they fell out and never saw it again, uh, saw each other again when they were 16. Yeah. So we Absolutely. know that something happened in the past, yeah. but we don't Great know Great girl what. stuff. Absolutely, yeah, it's all that kind of politics, Good. yeah, school yeah. politics. And then there's, so there's two timelines, and so one's the timeline where Nora is um, at this um, kind of hen party from hell, as you so, so perfectly put it. Um, and the other timeline is she's woken up in um, a hospital 48 hours later. Yeah. And you know that something catastrophic has happened. She's had a head injury. Uh, she can't quite remember what it is. And the story is about the collision between those two timelines. Yes. Nora trying to work out what has happened. How she ended because up Because the in police hospital. are there. She's been questioned by the police. Yeah. Uh, and they won't tell her everything. So she, and she can't remember anything. So those chapters are really good. You know, they're really, really tense. Because bit by bit, things are starting to come back. Little flashes, little images of, of, of bad things that have happened. But she can't put it all together. And obviously, by the end of the book, she does. I love that. I thought that was a really nice technique. But the, the wood itself, it's, it's up in Northumberland, isn't it? It is. It is, yeah. And it's uh, it is it's an old kind of pine forest, very very dark. I always think pine forests are much creepier than deciduous forests because they've got a bit of life to them. But pine forests, they're just dead. They're just they just. Well, sit you never there. get any sunlight in you never because get any they're sunlight. evergreen. They so, don't shed yeah. their leaves. You don't get autumn colours. They're just dark dark woods. And the house in the middle of the wood is a, a, a total surprise because it's kind of basically modern and made of glass. It's it's a see through house, isn't it? Well, when I first started writing it, um, the house I initially imagined was kind of very old, very tumble down. Um, like the witch's cottage. Sort of yeah, yeah, kind of. It was sort of a converted croft and it was very small, so everyone would be kind of crushed up against each other. And then as I wrote, I started to realise that actually one of the things that this book is about is about having the layers of what you're trying to hide peeled yeah. back. So it's about people being exposed and the kind of pretense that we put up for other people and having that kind of yeah. removed. And I thought how much more effective if it was a, 
opera house was a kind of symbol of that. So it's a it's a glass house where mm. there's there's nowhere to hide. There's, there's no nowhere curtains. to hide, and also in the in this surrounded, but no other ho houses uh, anywhere in this world. Just this one big glass house, and basically. When, when it's lit up at night and the characters are all inside, you get the feeling as a reader that somebody, something, is watching them. From inside the dark, dark wood, you get the feeling that something... And Now, in fact, that's a great atmospheric device, I think. It really... And it reminded me a little bit with the, sort of the group of, the, the group of characters all uh, together. Claustrophobically. Uh, claustrophobically. Uh, not many of them know each other. And it reminded me of a, of a sort of Agatha Christie mm. novel, the setting. Um, because, you know, they're all together, these terrible tensions. There's lots of drugs and alcohol around, which there wasn't with, with uh, Agatha Christie, but still. Um, and you know something terrible is going to happen. Are you a fan of Christie? I'm a huge fan of Christie, yeah. yeah. I think she's really underrated. And I used yeah, yeah. to. I agree with you, yeah. Great plotter, and mm. her characterisation is amazing as well. Um, but I used to read a huge amount of Christie as a kind of a young teen, and that definitely kind of, I, not <laughs> consciously, I didn't kind of set out to channel her, but after I'd finished it, I definitely looked back and thought, you know, there's so many of those amazing closed room mysteries in Christie, like, and then there were none, or the Sitterford mystery. Yeah. And that kind of collided, I think, in my head with probably having watched too many horror movies. <laughs> and you know that shot where the, the kids are all in the house and the lights are on and the, ca the, the camera is in the eyes of the killer and it kind of pans round the outside mm -hmm. of the house and you can see the killer is sort of looking yes. for a way in and yes. they're inside yeah. completely unsuspicious. Yes. And, kind of, yeah. and I think that is just my worst nightmare is the idea that you would be there kind of, you know, making supper or just having a chat or whatever. Yeah. And this person would be outside and you wouldn't even know it. So, and the yeah. and the initial spark for this this story uh, was, was a friend of yours, isn't it? Didn't she say something like um, that she'd never read a book, a novel about a hen party? Yeah, she said she'd never read a thriller set on a hen party. And I just thought, oh, I have to write this book. Yeah. It would be amazing, like closed cast of characters, all sorts of tensions. Yeah. It was... As a, uh, I mean, it's as a as a man, I was I was kind of um, intrigued to be drawn in to this um this modern world of modern young women. You mean you've never been on a hen night. I've never. <laughs> no, believe it or not, no, I haven't actually been invited on one. Although there isn't, there is one man on, on this uh, on, on this particular yeah. hen night. He's a very interesting character. Um, and what I what I almost felt privileged to kind of a uh, glimpse was the way. How old are you now? Can I ask you? I'm 38. Okay. Oh, gosh, you look younger than that. But the, the, the way modern young women talk to each other, the language that they use, the bad language that they use, and it's, it's, it's all changed from when I was a, a, a young man a young at that man. age. A young Well, I'm, I'm, I'm 60 next cat. birthday, Judy. Come on, give me a break. <laughs> um, and I like that. Uh, are you, are you, do you feel kind of plugged in to the world of young women today? I suppose I remember very clearly what it was like to be that age, kind of teen or 20-something. And also, I, th I think one of the things that is really interesting about a hen night and that I try to show in this book is how differently women interact when it's an all-female atmosphere. Yes. And, and there is a, a male character in the book, Tom, but, you know, it's primarily it's, it's women together letting their hair down. Yes. And I think that is a very specific Vibe. atmosphere yeah. that unless you're, you know, you're a, a woman who spent a lot of time in, in all female company, you don't necessarily know how kind of no. rowdy and bawdy and funny it, it can get. And competitive. So Strange. Yeah. I mean, I, I, we always think of men as being the competitive side of the, of the species, but actually women are incredibly competitive, yeah. when, as you say, when they're locked down together. Yeah, no, absolutely. And all of that kind of, you were saying about the kind of the schoolgirl politics, you mm. know, I love all that kind of, it's so interesting, the kind of the mean girls sort of vibe and the queen yeah. bee and the fact that she's always got her kind of second in command yeah. and, you know, yeah. all that. I and remember how nothing, that's... And nothing changes. No, and, and in absolutely. this environment, they're, they're all old enough to know better, but they all revert to type. Yeah. yeah. And again, that links back to the incident at school when they were at school um, that caused Claire and Nora uh, never to speak to each other again. Yeah. Well, it's a smashing book. I really, really enjoyed it. It's a very pacey it's book. It's yeah. very sort of stylish, stylishly written, I think. Hmm. Um, it's sort of... Uh, and and the, the title, In a Dark, Dark Wood, is, is just absolutely right because there's something about the book that's quite playful. It is a thriller and something horrible does happen indeed, um, as we find out, and something ho horrible has happened in the past. But despite all that, there's something quite playful about it. I think that's that's because it's, it's so slickly written. So mm. congratulations, it's Thank really you. good. Thank you so much for having me. 
I have a very pragmatic writing routine uh, because I have small kids who are at school so I tend to drop them off for the school run, race home and do as much writing as I can before I have to pick them up. So I wish I could say I had, you know, some amazing routine that I have to do, some beautiful music that I don't know. I, I just, I turn on the computer and I get down to it and I write as fast as I can. I tend to get myself into the kind of the routine of writing for the day by rereading what I've written the day before and I tend to edit as I go. Usually my first drafts are not that first-ish, they're, they're normally quite neat. I've ironed out the kind of the worst of the spelling mistakes and the kind of hideous phrases that make you a bit embarrassed afterwards when you read them back. Um, and that's also a really good way of getting myself back into the atmosphere of the book and remembering who the characters are and kind of where we're up to. Why would you say that we decided to run with In a Dark, Dark Wood? Well, I suppose partly because of what the author was telling us about the reason that, that she wrote it. Because actually, a, a novel about a hen party has never been written before. And we've all been racking our brains and doing a bit of Googling. And we cannot find uh, an example of this particular storyline before. I mean, hen nights, certainly to a bloke, are weird and wonderful events. I mean, we don't really know what goes on once, once the leaders have retreated into their, their, their place of partying out of sight. Um, but you certainly, you certainly get a taste of it here. And of course, as you said, because you, you read this book before I did, you looked at me over the pages after about sort of 50 pages and said, my God, this is the end party from hell. Um, and as a bloke, I really enjoyed that insight. And I also enjoyed reading about how you, modern young women in the 21st century talk to each other yeah. and what they talk about. And of course, hen, you say you'd never been to a hen party. I've never been to Have a hen you? party. No, well, people of my generation. You went out the other night and you said you were going to a hen party. Where did you go <laughs> I did to? Not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the uh, no, people of my generation didn't have hen parties. They are quite a modern phenomenon. Hmm. Uh, and so it was very clever, I think, of um, Ruth Ware to tap into that. And of course, it makes a perfect setting for a murder. Uh, because yes. you know it, it, it's a group of characters, most of whom don't know each other very well. Half of well. whom hate each other. Half of whom hate each other uh, on sight, and they're in <laughs> one house for a weekend for this hen weekend, which is supposed to be fun, but actually increasingly is more and more terrifying. Something and as, horrible is going to happen. And as the author herself uh, was happy to say and admit, if you like, um, it was very much inspired by the Agatha Christie style of thriller writing. You know, it's a bit, it's it's these, this classic tale of a, of a bunch of people, as in this case, all women except for one man, confined in. in in, a, in one space together. Um, it's claustrophobic. The house that they're in, which is literally in a dark, dark wood in Northumberland, is made of glass. It's a, it's a modern glass house. So at night, with all the lights on, anybody out in the forest can see exactly what's going on inside. And you do have the sense, as I think you said in your review, you have the sense that all the characters know at some fundamental level, not only are they watching each other, they think there's someone out there watching them watching each other. And that gives it a lovely sort of undercurrent of menace. And it's a great story. We always like to know what you're reading and what you think of the books Richard and Judy have chosen to include in the book club exclusive to WH Smith. I thought it was going to be amazing and I, so far I haven't been disappointed. It's a psychological thriller. I'm really enjoying the book. I'm enjoying all the characters. I like the twists and turns. I like the secrets and I have a funny feeling that there are a lot more secrets to come out. I, I go into a bookshop. The normal book I look for is a classical novel, so these are quite different to my normal reading and has opened my eyes to new authors. I like quite a variety of books. I often look at crime and drama, thrillers, uh, those kind of books, and also ones that's got a family saga through it, but interesting I think ones. It really grabbed me because it's handled with such humour. Sounds like the kind of story that's going to be a lot of fun, and I want some fun to make fun to read. The years may pass, but the titles in the book club collection never grow old. Why not rediscover a book or two by listening again via iTunes? Just search for Richard and Judy. We'll do come back for the next podcast and meet Mason Cross and hear about the great American crime story that he's created. In the first book, the, the, the villain likeable and people tended to come back and say I really like introduce me to your friends. <laughs> <laughs> people tend to come back and say they like the in some cases they like the villain more than the hero so I wanted I guess to delineate the bad guy a bit more in this one. The Samaritan and that'll be on the Richard and Judy Book Club podcast exclusive to WH Smith.